This morning we continue our in-depth look at how your local school district is gearing up for the new school year. And today we're focusing on the biggest district. This is Austin ISD. The district has more than 85 thousand students with 129 schools. So here to answer your questions this morning, AISD Superintendent Dr. Paul Cruz. Always good to see you. Likewise, it's good to be here. Thank you for being here on such a, a busy week because back to school is starting very, very soon. I'm sure the countdown is on, huh? It is, and we're getting our <laughs> teachers in, principals are in. Uh, we're gonna start practicing our bus routes. So, you know, it's really exciting time. Here we go. Okay, so let's fire off some questions because okay. I know that you're busy and we got a lot of questions in. Um, let's start with the report back in January that said projected enrollment at AISD would drop by 4,000 students by 2025. But then at the same time, you are offering up um, people to transfer into the district and applicants, I think we're in the 200 uh, range. Is AISD growing? or is it losing students and teachers? Well, that's still something that we're gonna be looking at, but yes, we are taking every opportunity to inform our constituency, the Austin community and the greater Austin community about our, our programs. One of those policies was that schools or students who live outside the district could actually come into our one of our Austin schools. Uh, another thing that we're doing is we're opening up pre-K for three-year-old students. Yeah. So last year we had two schools that had pre-K three programs. Now we're going to include more schools in that. So we are looking at our data. We're seeing that we have dropped in enrollment. It is true we had dropped in enrollment, but we're looking at how to bring that enrollment back up. And you're confident you'll be able to keep up with that growth if you continue to see hundreds of people wanting to transfer into AISD. And, and we'll make adjustments along the way because we do have available space and we have great programs for our students. Right, it says a lot about AI STEAM. This is a subject that I think is difficult for anybody to talk about for parents, but um, unfortunately it does happen. Dr. Cruz, what happens if a student, he or she, is sexually assaulted or harassed, sexually harassed on a school campus? What is the process of reporting this? Well, we take these situations very seriously and as what, what you just said is just so important. It is about reporting that incident. It is about that student telling a, an adult there at the campus, telling his or her parents or her family members to make sure that we follow up and we will investigate each one of those claims. Okay, as a superintendent, are you able to track these claims by schools to figure out, is there a trend that I need to look into? Is there some kind of tracking device to do that? Well, we do look at number of incidences every single year. We also look at safety situations. What do we need to do to make sure that it does not happen? We also do training sessions for our staff members as well to always be on the lookout and to make sure that our schools are safe. Okay, let's talk about questions that we asked our viewers to submit on social media and kxan.com. One question is coming from one of our viewers and his name is Oscar. Oscar writes very um, clearly, Dr. Cruz, when are teachers getting a raise? <laughs> well, uh, when included with this year's budget, there is a 3% increase in pay for teachers, librarians, and counselors. Actually, it's a 3% across the board raise. We've also had uh, one-time salary increases that now we're going to make permanent. And so uh, our board is having those discussions, just had that discussion last night. But for this next year, we do have a 3% increase across the board pay raise. You want to keep those good teachers and staff members here. Absolutely. That's why we have great schools, because of our teachers and principals or staff members. All right. Curious and concerned is uh, this person's name, and they wrote, um, Dr. Cruz, students live in a 21st century world, yet how does the district plan to prepare them for that if teachers, classrooms, and schools do not have the proper technology? First of all, do you agree that technology in schools is obsolete? Well, I, I do think technology is, is extremely important. And so right now we are actually rolling out our technology initiative. So it's campus by campus. In Austin, one size does not fit all. So in Austin ISD, we educate students who are three years old and they have technology that they can use for learning. But we also have students who are 20 years old, 19 years old, and it's going to be very different. Mm. Coursework is going to be very different. All that being said, technology is important. We are doing our rollout on our technology plan but it was part of a bond package from a couple of years ago and where our different school communities will come together to determine what type of technology is needed and what they will then request and we will purchase in the end. Times have changed, haven't they, since we were in school. They You're no longer have. writing notes on paper. Exactly. <laughs> I was sending out uh, Twitter messages earlier from our <laughs> E3 Alliance friends who were just on just a little, a few minutes ago. Uh, another question on, on Twitter and um, some of our other social media pages is, you know, what's going to happen when it comes to District 7, uh, Robert Schneider's replacement? What can you tell us about that? You know, well, first of all, just condolences to, to uh, Mr. Schneider's family, and it's uh, a very difficult time. 
but we also know that decisions have to be made and sure. we need to come in. Our, last night our board did talk about that and it, uh, at this point there is not a final decision. Last night was a discussion, but it looks like that um, to look at the possibility of appointing an individual to fill that, that seat okay. until the next election. Okay, got it. Always a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much and best of luck for the new school year. Thank you. Thank um, you so much for the opportunity we'll and good luck you. to you as well. Oh, I know my little boy's going into elementary. All right, we'll see you back here um, in the next few minutes. But just a reminder, our series of interviews with our superintendents in Central Texas continues tomorrow. Del Valley ISD superintendent is in the hot seat over here tomorrow.